Hi guys, welcome to this video which is going to be looking at the core practical and looking at how you can electrolyze copper sulfate with both inert and copper electrodes. In this video we're going to cover a few different things. The first thing being how do you carry out electrolysis of copper sulfate and encompassing that what happens to copper electrodes during this process. You also need to know how changing the current affects the electrolysis of copper sulfate so we'll have a look at some results and interpret them and then what happens if we use an inert graphite electrode instead of copper how does that change it and what do we see and then finally what are the skills hazards and risks that you need to know for this core practical that's what we're going to move on to now the first thing we're going to look at then is using copper electrodes to carry out electrolysis of copper sulfate the first thing you want to do in this experiment then is get yourself two copper electrodes. Now you need to make sure that these are completely clean so you need to get yourself some emery paper and you need to scrub them and clean them. Do this for a few minutes to make sure there's no dirt left on the actual electrodes. Once your electrodes are clean the next thing you want to do is to measure them and record the mass. So my first electrode has a mass of 2.65 and my second electrode has a mass of 2.41. Once you've measured your electrodes and got them set up ready to go into your solution, the next thing you want to do is get yourself some copper sulfate solution and you want to put it into a beaker so it's about halfway. Once you've done that you're ready to go with the experiment. So what you need to do is place your copper electrodes into the solution make sure they're not touching and then you want to turn your power pack on now what you need to do is make sure that the current is at 0.2 amps to do that you use a variable resistor so turn the power on I'm on 0.16 amps at the moment I'm going to move this resistor until I'm at 0.2 amps and I'm going to leave that for 20 minutes and when we come back I'll dry the electrodes off and measure the final mass. Okay, it's now been 20 minutes so I'm going to turn my power pack off and I'm going to remove the electrodes. My first task is to get a beaker and to rinse both the electrodes to get rid of any remaining copper sulfate from them. So I'm going to rinse both of them with a bit of distilled water. The next thing I'm going to do is get myself some propanone. I'm going to add it into a beaker. And then dip my electrodes into them. And then I'm going to remove it and just move it about in the air to get that propanone to evaporate off. This will leave me with my dry electrodes so I can weigh the final mass. So I'm going to do that with both. And I now have my dry electrodes, which you can then reweigh. Okay, it is time to reweigh the electrodes then. So the first one, which was my anode, which weighed 2.65, now weighs 2.53 grams. So you can see the mass has decreased. If I get my cathode, which was 2.41, and reweigh that that's gone up to 2.51 grams. So the anode has decreased and the cathode has increased. The next stage of the experiment is to do exactly the same setup again, but with different currents. So set it up the way we have done before, but do it with 0.3 amps, 0.4 amps and 0.5 amps to see how changing the current affects the mass of the electrodes. Okay, let's recap the method then. So the very first thing we did was we used some emery paper to clean the copper electrodes. We then 
measured the mass of the anode and the cathode, recording it, writing it down, and then we filled a beaker with the electrolyte, which in this case was a copper sulfate, and set up the circuit as you saw on the desk. Turned the power on, and then set the current to 0.2 amps by using a variable resistor. We then, once the electrodes were in, left it for 20 minutes, and then after 20 minutes we turned off the power and then washed the electrodes with water to remove any copper sulfate. We then added them to propanone, which was used to dry the actual electrodes, so we could then re-weigh them. That allowed us to see the change in mass of the anode, which went down, and the cathode, which went up. Now, the next step is to actually see how changing the current affects that, and that's an investigation you could well be asked to explain. So, by doing this experiment at 0.2 amps, 0.3, 0.4 and 0.5, you can see how changing the current changes the actual effect. Okay, so these are the results of that experiment then. So, the one that you saw me do, the anode, which started off at 2.65 grams, went down to 2.53, showing that it had a minus 0.12 mass change, went down by 0.12 grams. The cathode started at 2.41 and went up to 2.51, having a positive change of plus 0.10. When I did the same experiment at 0.3 grams, the change in mass was minus 0.18 and plus 0.15 for the cathode. At 0.4 grams, the anode went down by 0.23, and the cathode went up by 0.19, and at 0.5 amps, the anode down by 0.29, and the cathode up by 0.24. So you can see there's a definite pattern occurring here. If we have a look at the trend then, you can quite clearly see, as the current goes up, the mass of the anode decreases, and it is directly proportional. If you double the current, so 0.2 to 0.4, in this case, we've double the change in mass of the anode. The same can be said of the cathode. So at 0.2 we've got a 0.1 gram change. And at 0.4 it's just below 0.2 so it's almost exactly directly proportional. As you increase the current the change in mass of the cathode increases. The second method we're going to have a look at is a nice quick one looking at inert electrodes. The second part of this experiment, the second method, is to do exactly the same again, but with graphite electrodes, which are inert electrodes. So I'm going to do the same setup. This time you don't need to do it with all the different currents and you don't need to weigh it beforehand. All you're doing here is observing what happens to the electrodes. So I'm going to put the electrodes into the solution, again making sure they aren't touching. I'm going to turn the power on and then I'm going to leave it a little bit and see what happens. Okay, I've left this going for a few minutes then. Let's have a look at what's happened. So, one of the things that is quite obvious to see when you look at this is there is fizzing going on. So there are some bubbles being produced at one of the electrodes. In this instance, those bubbles are oxygen. If you look back to one of the previous videos we've done, you know that if you've got a sulfate or something that isn't a halide, oxygen is always produced at the anode. The cathode is where the metal is deposited, which you can see here has changed the colour of the electrode. And you can see it's got that coating of copper. Okay, so what was the difference between the two methods we looked at? Now, you saw in the second one, when we used the inert electrodes, the graphite, there was a gas produced, which I've already gone through, is oxygen. So, that is the one that you guys are used to, the one that we've talked about in previous lessons, in previous videos. Copper is produced at the cathode, and oxygen is produced at the anode. The hydroxide ions move to the anode, and then get converted into oxygen, which is where you see the bubbling, and water which stays in the solution. However, when we used the copper electrodes instead, something different occurred. Now we still got our copper metal, our copper metal at the cathode, but the difference is the actual anode itself, which was made of copper, started to dissolve. And what happened is it turned the metal copper at the anode into copper ions. That's why the actual mass of the copper anode decreased. 
That then moved across to the cathode, which increased in mass. Okay, let's have a look at a few questions then. So I've got seven that I want you to have a go at here. The first one being state one safety precaution that should be taken in this experiment. So think back to the things that I did that made the experiment safe. Question two, why do you need to clean the copper electrodes? So why did I use the emery paper right back at the beginning? Number three, what did I do to keep the current at 0.2 amps? Number four, why did I wash the electrodes with water after electrolysis? Number five, why was propanone used after the electrodes had been washed? Number six, explain why the mass of each electrode changed during the investigation. You might need to have a look at the previous video in this series which is looking at what happens to the electrodes during the electrolysis of copper sulfate, just to recap and just to get that knowledge secure in your head. If you need to do that, do that and then come back to this part of the video. And then finally, question seven, explain why the decrease in mass at the anode was not the same as the increase in mass at the cathode. Pause the video, have a go, and we'll see how you've done shortly. Okay, let's go through. So there are quite a few safety precautions that should be taken. Um, any one of them would have got you the mark. First one, the obvious one, wearing safety goggles. There's also making sure that the power is off when you're touching the circuit so you don't electrocute yourselves and making sure the electrodes do not touch so you don't get any sparks. Why did you need to clean the copper electrodes? Nice and simply, it's to remove any impurities from the surface so that that copper can get to the surface so it can be electrolyzed. What did I use to keep the current at 0.2 amps? A variable resistor. And why did I wash the electrodes after electrolysis? To remove any of the remaining copper sulfate, so the impurities. Question five. Why was propanone used after the electrodes had been washed? That was to help dry it. So if you think about it, if you were to use a cloth, you might rub off some of the copper that you've just transferred onto there. So this is a, a nice easy way of drying the electrodes without doing that. And then number six, so this is where the science comes into it. Explain why the mass of each electrode changed. So if you're starting off at the anode, those, that copper in the anode is turning into the copper ions. By doing that, they are becoming oxidized and losing electrons to become Cu2 plus ions. And then they move into the solution, so the copper anode dissolves, which decreases the mass. In the solution, they will then move to the cathode. They'll gain electrons and become reduced. And then they're added to the cathode, which increases the mass. So any four of those six will get you the four marks. And then finally, question seven, explain why the decrease in mass at the anode was not the same as the increase in mass at the cathode. Nice and simply, you have impurities. So the copper anode is impure, and then therefore it will produce something at the bottom, which is your sludge. That brings this video pretty much to an end. I have a review question for you. See if you can do this, which is describe how to investigate the effect of changing the current so from 0.2 to 0.3 to 0.4 to 0.5 amps on the mass of the anode and cathode during that electrolysis of copper sulfate. So what did I do step by step? Make sure you include when you write this down the step by step instructions how to carry out the investigation. So start off with the emery paper and so on. Any safety precautions you should take, safety goggles, etc. What results we should see mass of the anode decreasing, mass of the cathode increasing, and then Y, which is what we've just talked about in the last section. That brings this video to an end. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, click on subscribe, visit the website, and have a look at the latest video. Thanks for watching.